I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good evening. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lindbergh Public Access Channel on Facebook Live and the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lindbergh Access YouTube channel after the meeting. The agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. We'll start tonight with public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening from the board? All right. I will say that uh, I want to thank the Lunenburg Town Band, which had their first concert last night. It did not get rained out. It's actually a beautiful night and a beautiful venue. So for those people for the next uh, four weeks, I believe, uh, on Mondays at 7 o'clock in front of the T.C. Pasios building, that is where the uh, weather permitting, that is where the band concerts are ongoing. I want to thank the conductor, Steve Archambault, and the town, uh, and the town band. They do a great job. It was fun. Last night it was sponsored, I think, by the alumni and Turkey Hill uh, Lions Club, I think a little bit, not, maybe both. Anyway, uh, a good thing. Now, I don't know, Mr. Chair, are you going to make an announcement about uh, Mr. Barney or no? I was planning on it. Okay, then I will leave it to you. All right, we have any other public comments this evening? All right, so I want to, uh, Oh, we're still doing board comments. I'm sorry. We're, go we're about to open up to the public in a moment. Um, you know, my, I want to express to many members of our community that we've experienced um, a pretty significant loss over these last couple of days. Uh, Stan Barney passed uh, this week, uh, last week, and, you know, Stan was an important member of our community for, for many decades. Uh, his family has a long history of service. Uh, in the school department, on multiple boards and committees, also in the police department where Stan himself served uh, for over three decades. So we just want to honor uh, Stan Barney's contributions to the community. I encourage all members of our community to keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we do have a service scheduled uh, this Sunday. There is a service scheduled this Sunday. Um, <clears throat> from, I believe it's two to four is ca our calling hours with the service at 4 p.m. Um, and this will be at the Reynolds Funeral Home. Richards. Richards, thank you. Richards, Richards Funeral Home. And, um, and there will be a private burial on Monday morning. So again, please keep the Barney family and, and, and all of our thoughts and prayers. Any public comments from the town manager this evening? No public comment. Great. Any public comments from the public tonight? Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, John Reynolds, 91 Lancaster Ave, Chairman of the Sewer Commission. I promise I'll be brief. Uh, well, you can also make a comment under communications from other boards if you'd like for the board I, to respond. I, I think I'll be all right. I just, <clears throat> just want to clarify a couple of statements that were made at the last board meeting that I think were inaccurate. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> first is that uh, it was stated that <clears throat> a new request in the form of email was sent into the board. We didn't send in a new request. Uh, what it was is I had been asked to uh, send in documentation to support what I had presented at the last meeting, which I did too, but that wasn't a conditional request for more money. It, it was still <coughs> regarding the two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars okay that's that's the first one and I, I hope everyone got that package. Uh, the other is it was stated that we um, submitted an additional request for $305,000. Again, we, we haven't submitted in, submitted a new request since our original one. Uh, it's always been the 200 and 300. The only thing I can think of at 305 is that during my initial presentation, the cost for uh, pump station items that we wanted to work on came out to $305,000, but we rounded that down to 300. So again, we're not asking for anything that we hadn't asked for prior. Um, again, the 200,000 for manholes, 
and the $300,000 for the pump stations. Um, and I guess my only final comment would be, you know, COVID had a direct impact on the sewers. Um, and if you got the package that was emailed to each of you, you can see it in that graph. So unless you have any questions, that's all I have to offer tonight. Well, thank you for that clarification. Are there any questions for Mr. Reynolds? Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Uh, looks like we have Mr. McDonald. Oh, we can't hear you just yet, Mr. McDonald. How's that better? Yes, we can hear you now. Uh, good evening, uh, board. A uh, couple things I want to talk about. One is I want to thank Mike Mackle. Uh, Mike is going to be appointed, I hope, to the Sewer Commission within the next half hour. That leads me to volunteerism. But right now, the town is looking for help. They need help. Uh, there's positions open, and volunteerism, I'm finding out, as right now, I work in the Savage and Abbey. I'm up here in Rutland, uh, helping the people here in Vermont. It's been devastated, so we're here for a while. But volunteerism is very important for the town. I like to put a challenge out there to all the chairmen and people on boards to ask your friend, ask friends, tell them, come on, join the board, uh, help the town. Uh, we, we need it right now, more than ever. Uh, so, if you could, put a challenge out there, select me, have a friend, call somebody, any board member, just get them involved. And if you're watching this in your home, you want something to do, I'm up here with a lady called uh, Heather Gleason. She lives over in the Whalen District. And again, we asked her, volunteers don't volunteer unless they're asked to volunteer. So please, uh, you know, I know Chris Minard is very good at it as well, as Jane told. Ask people to join, ask people to get involved. Uh, and, uh, and again, I want to thank everybody for what they're doing. And I know I'm on for the sewer commission uh, meeting. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments this evening from the public? All right, do we have any announcements tonight? Yes, I'll do these at the front end. Town beach hours are Saturdays and Sundays, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Seasonal beach passes and swim lessons can be purchased through the lunenburgma.myrec.com site. The farmer's market is every Sunday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. until mid-October on the Ritter lawn. And as Selectman Alonzo stated, the summer band concert series is every Monday at 7 p.m. ending on August 14th at the TC Passio's front lawn. And another announcement, tax bills are due on Tuesday, August 1st. And that's all. All right, thank you. Do we have any communications from other boards? All right. So we are a little early for our public hearing tra uh, transfer since that's a uh, posted hearing. Uh, we have to start that at 7.15. And um, I think I think we can hit this. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to call for Mr. Reynolds or any, uh, I, I believe you're the chair of the sewer commission. Um, we may be able to move into our joint meeting if you want to call your meeting to order. I don't know if it were too soon or too early for your no. full people. We, we can do it. Okay. Yeah, John Rowlands, 91 Lancaster Ave, Chairman of the Sewer Commission, and we do have a quorum with Dave McDonald. John, I think something that the town manager is pointing out to me is that you guys are posted for 7.30. Right. So we have to, unfortunately, okay. <laughs> wait a little bit. Don't, don't leave your seats if you guys want to hang tight there. Um, we're just going to move down the agenda. We'll come back so that way you can start your meeting on the, at the posted time. All right. <laughs> Let's see, we're gonna to go to interviews, appointments, reappointments, and resignations. So tonight we have a Monachusett Regional School Representative reappointment. This is for Barbara Reynolds of 952 uh, Flat Hill Road. Since this is a reappointment, we did not uh, ask Ms. Reynolds to appear tonight um, for this. Are there any, um, and, and that's pretty much our, I think our norm with comes to reappointments and uh, we don't always invite people to come for reappointments. So what this is, is just as we have a school committee here in town, 
that um, because we also are part of the Monty Tech, um, Monachusett Regional School District as well, that we have a representative that's on that board and that representative is Barbara Reynolds. Do you have any additional information you'd like to provide related to this to the town manager? No, just saying that I think um, Barbara is an excellent representative for our community. Um, she's very responsive to any requests that we have. She attends meetings that I have with Monty Tech on occasion. Um, so, and she's served in this role for many years. All right. Does the board have any questions related to this reappointment? No questions, but I will say as a comment that I have served with Barbara for a long time on the finance committee, and she's been a long time serving on this committee as well as others. She's a really excellent volunteer in town, and she does excellent work with Massachusetts uh, Regional, the Monty Tech uh, representative work, and has for her past few terms. And I, if she's willing to continue, I think we. It's an honor to have her. All right, with that, Mr. Lonsdy, would you like to make the motion? Sure, I move that we approve the appointment of Barbara Reynolds of 952 Flat Hill Road to be the Massachusetts Regional School Representative for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. Second. Any additional discussion? All right, as many as are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. This is a four-year term? Five. Five-year term. The motion passes so unanimously. That, wouldn't Five. that be 2028? Yes. So I would amend my motion to say her term expires <laughs> June 30th, 2028. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All right. We're going to redo the vote. Uh, any other discussion? All right. As many as are in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. The motion again passes unanimously. All right. Uh, next, we have ratification of the town manager's appointment of veteran services agent Michelle Durkee. So I know the town manager is going to present this, and I'll offer a comment that I, uh, Michelle, Michelle's husband, I had the honor of meeting Michelle, I think it was about 15 years ago. And uh, Michelle's husband was my first company commander when I became an officer. Um, so I'm familiar with her work, but I'll turn to the town manager for the presentation of this appointment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, asking the board to ratify Michelle as the next veteran service officer. And I'll tell you a little bit about her background and for the public as well. Since the departure of the veteran service agent, David Lazan, the Lemonster VSO, Vic Votor, has been assisting us. This position was posted on the bulletin board, town website, ledger, indeed, and through Rick Voltor, the Lemonster VSO. We received three applicants that qualified due to their veteran status, two of which were referred by Vic Rick. Both referrals were good candidates, but Michelle stood out as the top candidate. Michelle has a bachelor's in Spanish and a master's in divinity. Michelle has a combined military service of 25 years in the Navy and Army, retiring in 2021. She started out active Navy, and her specialty was a payroll administrator for about 7,000 sailors on a ship. And then she went on to the Mass Army National Guard. The first 10 years in the National Guard, she served as the administrative clerk, and the last 10 years, she served as their chaplain. Her most recent work was for Trinity Hospice, where she served as the hospice chaplain. Her references validated her passion for this type of work, which was apparent during her interview process and confirm that her strength is advocacy. She is committed and compassionate. Since Michelle has not served as a veteran service officer before, the assistant town manager has lined up training through the Lemonster VSO, as well as the state representative um, to help get her up to speed and the processes and some middle of paperwork that needs to be done for veteran benefits. So I'm asking the board to ratify Michelle as the next veteran service officer. All right, and I would just add as an additional comment that I was not aware that Michelle had even applied for this position until I saw that she came forward, uh, the town manager recommended to her for ratification. To the board for any questions or comments, or is there a motion? I, I'll, move, I'll make the motion. I move to uh, ratify the town manager's appointment of Michelle Durkee to the position of a veteran S services agent. Second. Any additional discussion? As many as are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. All right, the motion passes. Michelle is ratified, so Thanks. please extend our congratulations to her. And we'll come back to uh, Cole after we have our scheduled appointments this evening. 
All right. So we're going to start tonight with a 715 public hearing for a transfer of a wine and malt and malt license to uh, Mahant Baker Variety Inc. doing business as Baker's Well and Variety located at 423 uh, Massachusetts Avenue. So I want to explain to the applicants briefly um, how this process usually works. So we will have the clerk read the public hearing notice. We will then invite you to come forward. We'll invite you to come forward to the podium uh, to introduce yourselves. Uh, after we have the reading of the public notice, and again, at the podium, you will um, explain to us the reason why you're doing this transfer. Um, it's always helpful to give any kind of background related to your experience uh, serving alcohol, and then we will turn to the board for any questions or comments from the board, and we will also provide an opportunity to the public for any questions or comments from the public. We will then close the hearing, and at that point, uh, the board will enter into discussion and deliberation. Uh, and make a decision or decide to uh, reconvene at a later date. So with that, I'll turn to the clerk to read the public hearing notice. The Lunenburg Licensing Authority or Select Board will hold a public hearing on July 18th, 2023 at 715 p.m. in Town Hall, 17 Main Street, second floor, Lunenburg, Massachusetts, on the application submitted by Mahant Baker's Variety, Inc., doing business as Baker's Whalem Variety for the transfer of a wine and malt retail license located at 423 Electric Ave, Lunenburg, Massachusetts. The premises is described as a single story variety store consisting of display and storage areas and an office with one entrance and two exits, total of 1,600 square feet. Do I also need to read the Zoom information? No. For the, okay. All right. So with that, the public hearing is now open. Again, I will invite the applicants to come forward, the applicant or the representative to come forward. And again, if you wouldn't mind explaining your interest in this and any kind of background and experience uh, related to this. All right, good after chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> My name is Bo Akers, I'm counsel for the applicant. I'm from Brainsky Levinson LLC, a firm out of Seekonk, Mass. Um, so thank you for having me today. This is my first time in this area. Um, and it's a very nice town, and I really do like the logo the town has. <laughs> um, in that regard, this is uh, for a transfer of liquor license uh, pursuant to Section 15, which is a package store, uh, and specifically being a malt and wine annual license. Um, the property is located at 423 Electric Avenue. Uh, I also have with me uh, my, oops, I'm losing documents. Um, gravity's not working here. There we go. Um, I have my client here. Uh, who's going to be the manager of record, Ashish Patel. Um, just as an overview, uh, the <clears throat> business's proposed hours here are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, employees before, I believe, uh, they'll be the um, current employees will be staying on uh, with the transfer. Uh, my client can speak more to that. Um, with that, uh, the... Uh, there is the purchase and sales agreement, there's a lease, uh, as well as uh, a request for the video licenses, which I believe uh, contains a Kino uh, and a screen there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, everything as far as uh, what would be sent to the ABCC, the ABCC here, Corey forms have been filed, uh, Mass Department of Revenue um, for the town, the business certificate, uh, and the TIP certifications, which my client has, uh, have all been provided. And on that note, um, and another note which the town had mentioned, uh, that being a sales policy regarding security, safety measures, et cetera, um, you know, in determining uh, age requirements, et cetera. Uh, so on that note, I have my client here with me, just Patel, if you have any uh, questions as the particulars um, of the business. All right. I will. Or if you have any for me as well. You, you've come prepared. Um, I will turn to my colleagues for any questions they may have. Yes, or um, comments. Just one question. If I understand this correctly, you have uh, licenses at other businesses in Massachusetts, it looks like. Am I right? Uh, that, that is correct. Okay. Four other ones? Uh, yes. I okay. <clears throat> I have that in here. I believe that was provided to the town. So my client has uh, approximately 12 years experience in this industry um, and interest in a few other um, entities or uh, other licensed uh, liquor stores. 
No other questions for me. I see that the other establishments are down closer to Seekonk in the Fall River, New Bedford area. This would be the first one some significant distance away. I'm just wondering how the management of the location would happen at such a distance. Who would be the, the, the closest to respond to anything and running if something were to happen there? Um, my client does v visit um, the different establishments. Obviously, the ones that are close in proximity, uh, it would be easier. But my client would have a, um, a manager that runs the store uh, that would oversee everything as well as, as well as my client being able to go uh, to the store as well. I know it's a distance, but it's not, uh, it's not hours away um, from Southeast Mass. The hours that you're looking for, uh, well, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. I don't. What are the current hours? I is that a change in the current hours at all? I'm not sure if it's a change. Uh, I went on Google uh, to see what the current hours were. I believe they went to nine. Um, I'm not sure if that's on record with the town or not. Um, these are the proposed hours to you know see what the what the board would permit, of course. No further questions. Thank you. So you mentioned 12 years of experience. Is that particularly with the sale of alcohol? Yes. Okay. You can come up and if, if you want to, if not, that's yeah. either one of you can answer yeah, the question. Can <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering, um, thank you for sharing more about your background and experience. So uh -huh. during that time, have there ever been any issues or violations? Uh, so far, like 12 years, I never got any ticket, uh, not only for beer and wine, uh, not like tobacco or cigarette, anything. Because uh, like, uh, <coughs> I have, we, we do like first things in, uh, when we have a store, like uh, first do is uh, like a scanning system. And uh, we like uh, every single person, like uh, if you see like, um, so without the scan or without put the ID, uh, it's not gonna sell. So that's the thing, so we never get the, any ticket so far. Okay, thank you. And I didn't see that you have your sales and your training policy and it looked comprehensive yeah. to me, so thank you for that. And uh, we hire like a, or if hire like tip certificate employee or if they don't have, we try to get like tip certificate from them. Okay. Thank you. So. Mr. Nazolo covered my questions. I, I was, where is the fourth location, the, the in-holder license? Like, you have the locations for the other three, but. Uh. Uh, one I have in uh, Swansea. Yeah. And uh, one in the Fall River. Uh, one is in the New Bedford. And the uh, other one is in Attleboro. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, Mr. Nazolo asked my questions. So, thank you. Yes. I have no further. I have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, can so can you can you explain to me how? And I, I want to touch upon a question that Mr. Alonzo asked. Can you explain to me how the management of the property is going to work, of the business is going to work, given that you have um, three other establishments. This is going to be four that will be open at the same times. You mentioned that later down the line, you plan on having a manager on a different manager on record. Uh, I think that's what your counsel just stated. But can you explain to me how the management work, how you provide that supervision over four <coughs> establishments at the same uh, time? I have like a general manager in my uh, stores, but uh, in top of that is like my wife also do, uh, and uh, she has experience like uh, more than 12 years. Uh, so she also come and uh, take care and training to employee and everything. And uh, she going like uh, one or two store every day to check it out. And on uh, top of it, uh, my brother also go for the manager for one, one store. Okay, um, but am I, you didn't list either of them as managers on record for this establishment though? Oh, um, Mr. Patel here is a manager of record for this establishment. Um, what I think I, I'll clarify, when I said manager, I meant um, as far as employees go, having a, a general manager that oversees the employees as well as Mr. Patel. Okay. Um, visiting the site and making sure everything's running smoothly. All right. But as far as the manager on duty, it's going to be yourself. Yes. So you're planning on providing managerial services to four different establishments that provide alcohol, and you ultimately are going to be the one that's responsible for, for personnel selling alcohol. So can you, just, can you just explain to me what your, you said that you have your spouse 
that is also someone that's helpful with the manager management of the businesses. Um, you have a general manager. Many establishments choose to list these individuals on their application as, as additional managers. Right now is like a, here is like a four employee we have, I think so, and a CEO, another one is a, like an owner. So if it's like a, I have like four employees, so I can uh, do like a one employee as a like general manager, so they take care of all other three employees, uh, you know, how to manage and everything and uh, uh, certify the TIP certificate or they can explain everything, you know, not underage, we cannot sell it anything, that kind of stuff. Uh, so every store I have like something to somebody that train to the employee. Okay. So when I look at our regulations on this and specifically I'm going to give you the section, I'm looking at section 1.18, which refers to the management of the businesses. And this is in our policies and I'll just read you 1.18 E. It says the manager or their designee must be on the premises at least 50% of the time the premises are open. The manager shall have total responsibility for the proper operation of the licensed premises, whether present or not. No appointment of a manager shall be effective unless and, in, and until approved um, by the license commission, which is the select board. If the manager leaves the employer, the license holder, the license holder shall notify the commission immediately and shall promptly follow a change of manager application. Um, no change of manager will be effective until approved by the commission and alcoholic beverages control commission. So the manager or their designee uh, must be on the premises at least 50% of the time. So am I hearing that you or your wife? My, my brother is also my partner. So he is also 50% in the other two store. So he also go to the other store too. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, so if I, if I understand your question as well as the, uh, uh, the policy there. Um, somebody has to be at the store 50% yeah. of the time. No, I, I will be here like a most of all the time here because uh, this here I try to put more hours in this store but the other store I have my partner is like my brother is my partner too on, okay. re, uh, on under the beer license too right. so he take care of uh, that uh, too lot and I gonna maybe I try to move here this uh, area so I gonna do take care of this store okay so I hear you. Yes. <laughs> I think you're setting. I, I think how that lands on my, me is that 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 seems a really challenge, challenging dynamic, um, where you know you listed as a. I think the solution here is you may want to list someone else as a manager of record. I think that's the solution, and the um, and the challenge is that since our policies require the manager to be on premises at least half the time, you know I think with you having four other businesses, you you coming from the Seekonk area, which I know is a significant drive. Um, and then you're crossing major intersections, so traffic, a whole bunch of obstacles that can get in the way. Uh, I think it, it will be challenging, and I'm not in your business, but I foresee that it will be challenging to expect that you are going to be in the town of Lunenburg half, be, half the time between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m., seven days a week, um, especially when you have other businesses that you have to run. <clears throat> so the solution around this may very well be to come back to us and ask for, you know, to add someone else as a manager here that will help with your burden a bit. But otherwise, it sounds as if you have a lot of experience in this area. Um, you know, you're not presenting with any history of, of issues. So what is the, you know, our policy requires that you have a policy um, related to the sale of alcohol. So what is your policy? I believe I've, we have attached a policy regulations uh, to the application. You did? You did. Yes. So if you wouldn't mind just giving me kind of the highlights of the controls that you have in place to minimize the sale of alcohol to people who aren't able to actually buy alcohol. <clears throat> because uh, we have here like a beer and wine license only. So my next uh, door is like full liquor license. Correct. So this, uh, whatever is my store is like uh, only like hun not 100 food. There is a full liquor license. So he uh, still didn't sell like that much is uh, alcohol particular but uh, this is my convenience store plus like beer and wine but most of if you see the all aisles is full of the food um, and Mr. Patel if you may uh, as far as security goes you're mentioning card yeah. readers of yeah that. because I already mentioned for this sir like uh, we have like a system right now she don't have any any particular like scanner system or the 
whatever is our register i'm gonna buy another register for first day and there is a, like a different system like scanner system so until like we didn't scan any item we didn't sell it the computer didn't tell like we can sell it any for any employee okay. so we're gonna do the scanning system and we must need to scan id otherwise they cannot sell it because the register not take it any money or they cannot take any credit card or debit card all right. So first things like we, I do not gonna try this one for ever. First. That is the answer I was hoping for. It seems to work, obviously, by the record. It does. You know, I, I don't understand businesses who don't employ the card scanning system because yeah. it's a full and safe way. You know, I've seen some of these fake so, IDs. And now. some people has a fake ID. Yeah. Still, they're not gonna sell it because yeah. they're gonna top or write down. They say it's a fake. It yeah. seems so, like a pretty, pretty efficient way to take care of that problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, and I'm, I don't want to sell any under it because I don't want any trouble. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want any trouble, and, yeah. and, and the people who have been raising kids for you know, 20 years certainly want them to come yes, home. Yes, yes, sir. Um, safe and sound. I don't have any other questions. Uh, it seems as if you're qualified. What is, I know that there's been a change in the amount of licenses you're allowed to hold. I'm just not familiar with what that change is. I know it used to be three, but but I, I know it's gone up several years it ago. It has. I, I looked at seven this. seven now? It looks like nine. Yeah, nine. it's more than that. I looked at this uh, this last year, or, or maybe 2021 now, um, but yeah, it increased uh, to include nine, yeah. All right. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, yeah, if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, related to it, something, I, I noticed this as Mr. Jeffries was um, conversing with you. Page six, line uh, item 12 of the application related to the issue of designating a manager on site. This literally in this document right now says that you personally will be on premises 40 hours per week. You may want to amend that and clarify that your designee uh, or you will be there covering 40 hours per week when you list who that designee is okay. you know yes sir. All right. All right. that sounds more than reasonable yep. yeah. just so it's the paper the documents are in order yes Mr. Chair, I will, I will comment that the the line of questioning that you and, and Mr. Franco brought up was why I asked you about the distance. And so while I don't think it's going to get in, the, at least for me personally, it's not going to get in the way of me approving the license, I think to, f to be in compliance with the town's liquor policies, I agree with my colleagues that you're going to want to appoint somebody else to be there as well, because otherwise you're going to yeah. Either, you're, either you're not going to be there and then you won't be in compliance or you're going to be a lot of time driving to and from here or getting a home here quickly. So not that that would be bad, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So certainly, I mean, you know, we support small business. I think most communities do. We always like to see businesses stay vibrant. You know, when it comes to alcohol, I know that I am a bit more uptight about that um, because of how it impacts it really, you know, it sounds like you're not, it sounds like you are doing the right thing. So I'm going to preach to the choir for 10 seconds here and just say that, you know, my main concern is really the kids, the kids who know where they can go to buy booze underage. And so long as you're not in establishments that's providing to them, they're not going to come there. And that resolves the majority of my concern. But to be fully compliant with our policies, like I said, I would expect that you guys will come back before us um, and submit a change of, of manager or add another manager in because, you know, driving from Seekonk to Lunenburg. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I'm going to do like, a, maybe I'm going to move in this area. Yeah, well, that's always great. We have wonderful homes for sale. Because the uh, other two <laughs> is like my brother is going to take care because he's a partner to 50%. Okay. So he's a husband. So he's going to take care. I'm going to take care of this one and uh, one, one more. That's it. Got it. Yeah. All right. Is any other questions, or if not, is there a motion to approve? I would move that uh, we approve. Yeah. Well, I think. Do you want to yeah. hear as a public hearing? Do you yeah, want I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just realized I didn't call for the public. Um, is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this application tonight? Anyone from the public? It looks like so. Yes, please come forward. And you have to just. Yep, you come to the microphone, and then you want to state your name and address. And then any comment you have or if you have questions for the applicant or for us. 
Hi, my name is Carol Baker, and I am the owner of Baker's Whale and Variety in Lunenburg. How are you? And um, we've owned it for 35 years. It's been a wonderful store. Um, we've had the beer and wine license uh, for many years, not all 35 years, but for probably a good 20, 25 years. Uh, it's worked out very well. We've had people try to come in and buy uh, uh, underage and things like that. You kind of know because they, uh, when you ask for their license, they say, oh, uh, oh, I left it in the car. And they go out to the car and never come back. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so a lot of them you can, you know, you can spot. Um, sometimes it's a little difficult, though, I have to say. So um, um, you have to have these rules that, uh, that you're putting out now, and I think they're, they're good. And um, I think it uh, really... Um, those those uh, young people who want to come in don't come in anymore because they know they're not going to get anywhere anymore. But anyway, I wanted to thank you all. Um, Henry and I, my husband Henry is here. We both own the store, not just me. Um, uh, and w we just can't do it anymore. It, it's it's it, it's a happy sad thing, you know. Uh, after all these years, to have to give up a business uh, that we loved and stuff and the people that friends and things that we made um and it, you get the convenience stores all the times now the ones that are um you know a lot of cumbies and a lot of this and a lot of that the, the old family stores uh just aren't here anymore and people like to come in and they like to talk and they like to sit at the counter and stuff and uh, play keno or whatever and you know pass the time so we lose those stores now, it's too bad, but um, I'm glad that this gentleman, uh, you're gonna keep it, uh, right? <laughs> we talk, we talk. <laughs> you're gonna improve it, yes. The store is very old, it's a post and beam building, and he's gonna, I liked what he was gonna do, so I chose him to buy my store. So that's pretty much it. Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm so glad that Mrs. Baker came up because it gives me the opportunity to say, you know, the. the Baker Whale and Variety Store has been a cornerstone of the business of the of the town ever since I moved in in, in 1998. Uh, it's run by an excellent family. It's been a great store, and I really appreciate all the work that you put into it and and thank you. what you brought to the community. So thank you. Thank you very much, for all of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to your husband as well. So uh, you know, I know that you're entering. Um, what should be the golden years of life. So I hope that, that this will enable that. Yes, if you wouldn't mind stating your name and address and then yep. your comment or question. Uh, Matthew Strait, 279 West Street in Lunenburg. Um, I represent uh, Carol and I'm the listing agent and I just hope that you uh, support this decision today. They certainly want to retire. Mm -hmm. um, I will say most of the uh, prospective uh, buyers were from out of town and one thing that mr. Patel didn't point out is about a month ago he reached out to me asking to help him look to purchase a home here and um, and he had we had a pretty serious con conversation about that and typically and this was before the obviously obviously the conversation today so that's a good sign. I mean, I live in Lunenburg. I can practically walk to the store. I want to make sure that it's run by people who are invested in Lunenburg and care about Lunenburg. And although my kids are young, eventually they're going to be thinking about alcohol. <laughs> and uh, we're all on the same page. This is our community. So I hope you support uh, this decision. I think we're going to have a great new business partner uh, if, you, if you say yes tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do we have any other public comments from the public? All right, seeing none, uh, we will close the public hearing at 739. Uh, any additional discussion by the board? And if not, is there a motion? Uh, just, just one question. Is the motion premature at this point? I mean, are they, do we want them to amend this and come back with the designee before? I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with how it's presented with the understanding that they will be coming back to us. It's going to be a, a bit of time for them to get all yep. this paperwork yeah. processed by the state anyway. Closing, getting employees, <clears throat> and then with my client purchase property out here, there would be no need to amend. Um, and then if so, then we would be coming back yep. to do so. so. And we renew anyway in December, so they have to, you know, I think we'll be looking for that. Yep. So, um, you know, so you have to resubmit your application anyway by like November or something <laughs> so we can discuss it in So in a few December. months. <laughs> 
I know. It's, can you believe November is a couple months away? No, don't even start. Not even. I'm waiting for <laughs> waiting for call. summer to start. Four months. Waiting for summer <laughs> yeah. to start. All right. If if you would entertain a motion, I am. Then I All move right. that we uh, approve the transfer of the wine and malt license to uh, Mahant's Baker Variety Inc. Doing business as Baker's uh, Well and Variety Inc. Located at 425. Electric Ave, inclusive, if I may, do this all in one motion? Yes. Inclusive of the Common Vic license, the three automatic amusement devices, uh, the video game licenses as well. Second. All right, and additional discussion. All right, as many as are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. The motion passes unanimously. So we will have some documentation, uh, and it should be available for you guys tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Good Thank luck. You. And and happy retirement. And happy <laughs> retirement. <laughs> All right. So we're going to come back to our 7.30. Paul is being a little late here on it. We're going to come back to our 7.30 joint meeting with the Sewer Commission. Um, again, if you want to call your meeting to order, and then uh, we will uh, proceed. Do you with still have Dave McDonald? We, you do. Okay. Uh, I see Mr. McDonald is on Zoom. We'll go ahead and unmute him so he can speak freely. If you want to call your meeting to order. Okay. Um, seeing that we do have a quorum here, uh, Dave McDonald, Brett Ramston, and John Reynolds, myself, uh, I'd like to call to order the July 18th, 2023 uh, meeting of the Sewer Commission, a joint meeting between the uh, Sewer Commission and the Board of Selectmen to interview Mike Macon and potentially, hopefully, appoint him to the Sewer Commission. All right, I recognize the Sewer Commission as being in order for this joint meeting. So the purpose of this joint meeting tonight, as Mr. Reynolds just indicated, is to interview um, Mr. Mackin to fill a vacancy. Um, as per our charter, um, when we have vacancies on elected boards, uh, it is a joint appointment, specifically in the Sewer Commission, it's a joint appointment by uh, the existing members of the Sewer Commission as well as by this board. So I will start with any um, Mr. Mackin, if you want to uh, give us kind of an overview of your experience in town, I think we're all very familiar with who you are, but if you wouldn't mind giving us an overview and also state your interest in why you're looking to join the, the sewer commissioners. Sure. Uh, Mike Mackin, 26 Cortland Circle in Lunenburg. Um, having lived in Lunenburg now, just past, we just passed our 20th anniversary as, as homeowners in Lunenburg. Congratulations. And, uh, uh, you know, we came you know, with knowing very little and over the period of time we've lived here I've fallen in love with with the town and uh, uh, first of all just the physical beauty of the town is is you know you just drive up Lancaster or you know through my area on Flat Hill where the orchards and the horses are it's just physically a beautiful place to live um, and also the, the, the you know we're a government based on people that volunteer for it and uh, <clears throat> I find some extraordinary people um, you know, what brings me to the Sewer Commission was, uh, uh, as anybody that knows Mr. McDonald, he's very persuasive. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so my uh, experience in town is that uh, I've been on the school committee. I did two terms on the school committee. Uh, and one of those terms, I was the uh, chairman of the school committee. Uh, while I was on the school committee, I chaired a, uh, a group that uh, made the recommendation that the districts go from you know the current state of four schools to three schools uh, which brought about then the thinking of, of the combined uh, middle high school uh, and that was a, a group that was made up of, of uh, administrators community members uh, uh, the um, uh, members of the finance committee there was a, a broad outreach for this uh, kind of special committee that was sponsored by the uh, school committee. And uh, I chaired that committee, and uh, that, that's how that recommendation came about. Um, I did two years on the finance committee. Um, uh, as Mr. Alonzo is fond of saying, if you want to know, you know where everything and how everything is done in town, you go to the finance committee, because you, you'll, you'll learn it there. Um, well, in the school building committee, I then became the chairman of the school building committee uh, and served on that until the completion of the project. Uh, the, we got the, the passage by uh, the voters, 72% of the voters approved of uh, the, the, the um, um, debt 
uh, exclusion. Uh, we were approved for $72 million. The project came in at $69 million on time. I'm very proud of that piece of work that I, that I helped with. <laughs> there were a lot of hands involved, but I was glad I was a part of being, being a part of that. Um, Of my professional background, I had spent uh, years in service to people with developmental disabilities. Uh, first in New York, I did 13 years with the New York State Office of Mental Retardation and Developmental Disabilities, which is now going by a different name. <laughs> and uh, um, a good chunk of that time, I was in uh, program development where I sought out properties uh, to buy and renovate to use as group homes in the community. Um, and that was in the early days of of that movement and it was a challenge but uh, we were able to accomplish it. I also was involved in the construction of a number of homes uh, especially for uh, complete handicapped accessibility for some folks. Um, so I'm familiar with you know building issues and infrastructure issues um, and certainly you know the importance of, of sewers in town is just like the importance of roads or water I mean, it's, it's, um, it's critical infrastructure. So that's my interest. Thank you, Mr. Mackin. Um, I want to turn, uh, we're going to use you with questions. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, let me ask you, has your board had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Mackin, interview him, or ask him any questions prior to tonight? Yes, he, he's actually attended two meetings already. And um, I knew most of Mr. Mackin's history just from living in town and seeing him on various boards so I, I, I think it would be great he'd be a great asset to the committee as far as any additional questions I don't have any additional questions for him uh, Brett I don't know if you do again he you know sat through two of our meetings already uh, uh, mr. McDonald are you there yeah, no, just like I said at the beginning, I want to thank uh, Mike for joining us and uh, our hearts go out to you. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. All right. Do we have any questions from the board for the applicant? No or questions. Comments? Yeah, I'll just say, um, I mean, clearly you have a lot of experience in town, and thank you for volunteering for all those committees and for, for stepping up again and volunteering. I have one question. My one question is, because this is an appointment until such time as the next election, is it your intention to run for the remainder of the term or the full term? I don't know what's available for this seat uh, in the next election. Three years. I think it's a three-year. It's a three-year term. It's a three-year term. Would I, would I, if I'm, yeah, if, uh, sure, I would, I would, I would You'd be interested entertain, in okay. entertain it, absolutely. Okay, so then I have a comment. So I've known Mr. Mackin for many years. I have served with him on several of these committees that he listed, most recently the school building committee. I was uh, on the, the latter part of that project. I can vouch for the fact that he puts his energy into every one of these things wholeheartedly. He, he's always in attendance. He's not absentee. He brings great points to discussions. So from that standpoint, I, I fully uh, support his application here, and I know he'll do a great job. Uh, and then my one observation, and I would be remiss if I didn't do this, because I said this at the Finance Committee Appointment Committee last week, the one thing I hope that our educational, and being the former chair of the school committee, I hope they approach is some handwriting course, because these applications <laughs> become more and more difficult to read. Every single one I get, this is no different. I actually had to study this and put on my glasses like, what am I reading? So uh, that aside, if we, if, we, if, we, if we promise not to let him write, hand write anything, I think we're okay. And we even made the form PDF fillable. Right? right? Well, I, I won't put those kinds of restrictions on. <laughs> See you. So as everyone knows, I'm pretty new to town. So I don't know everyone's 
personal history with volunteering for boards and committees, but when I looked at your volunteer application form, I noticed that you have pretty much every single board and committee in town <laughs> listed, so it's about time that we add the sewer commission to that list. Um, but really though, you saw a vacancy and you decided to step forward and volunteer. Um, and I think it's great that we have engaged residents like you who are willing to do that. Um, it's very important. I wish we had more, um, but that's certainly not your problem. Um, and I think you're setting a great example. So thank you. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for stepping up. Uh, as you stated yourself, the uh, I, I mean, and, and we've said before, the, the uh, smooth operation of the town depends on people stepping up and, and uh, filling these positions so uh, but even before your statement and before mr. Alonzo's endorsement I was certainly well aware of all the service you had previously provided to the town uh, and I know that in whatever capacity you serve the town you will add value so I totally support this as well thank you yeah th thank you mr. Mackin for coming forward um, you know you are a great member of our community and I've <laughs> served with you uh, on two different um, boards of committees so far You've been a real joy to work with. You definitely bring a lot to the table, a lot of perspective. Um, you really consider everything in front of you. I know that you're fair, reasonable, rational. And you know your, your colleagues to your left um, are, are great people. And I think you'll get a lot out of them, um, out of working with them. And, and certainly, you know, knowing the different personalities, I know that you'll add a lot to, to the table. So um, with that, is there a motion to um, I will ask the sewer commissions to make the motion tonight to appoint. Okay. Um, Dave, you still there? No, yes. Go ahead. Okay, do you want to make the motion? No. Okay, Dave, would you like to go ahead and make a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I recommend that we appoint uh, Mike Mackin to uh, the chair for one year up to the sewer commission for one. I wish I was sitting next to you, too. I'm, I'm part of that group sitting next to the left of you, so. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you would like to second the motion? Yes, I would like to second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, and we're going to do a roll call vote and in, in not uh, include, because Mr. McDonald's on Zoom, including the members of the SOAR Commission. So this is going to be a roll call vote starting with the select board, uh, select Min Imke. Aye. I mean, that's me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Aye. <laughs> Selectman Alonzo. Aye. Uh, Selectman Nazolo. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. And an aye for myself, Michael Ray Jeffries, uh, Mr. Reynolds. If you want to take the roll call for your board. Yeah. Uh, Brett, would you like to? Uh, aye. Mr. McDonald. Aye. And aye for myself. All right. That is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Mackin. Thank you all. Congratulations. All right, so please, please be sure to um, to check in with the town clerk and get sworn in. Be sworn in. Yep. All right. Normally, I would refer people to our policies, but this is a elected role, so um, you know you should reference our policies. Some things may apply, but not all. Um, and that would be our appointment policy. But again, it's a little little different given that this is not a board that we typically appoint. To. And, and I will arrange through the through the town manager for for a an official. Uh, email yes yeah okay and even if they don't apply the policies are great reading <laughs> <laughs> all right mr. Reynolds if you want to adjourn your meeting yeah right we'll make a motion to adjourn yes I would love to make a motion to adjourn thank you mr. McDonald do you want to second that uh, he's, he's, already he's already signed off I'm sorry he's already signed off he's already signed off uh, can we close, close the more meeting without a quorum? Well, you have a yes. quorum now. Right. <laughs> well, he can't officially oh, act until he's sworn in. Second the motion. The answer to your question meeting? is yes, John. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can close a meeting with yeah. less than a quorum because it's kind of officially closed anyway it's, now yeah. that you've lost the yeah. quorum. All right. No uh, motion necessary because it's closed. Right. There's no further discussion. All right. So, so we, rec we, we recognize that at 7, uh, excuse me, I have my watch in military time, but at 7.54 that the sort commissioners have closed their meeting. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. I, I misheard you when you said it was a real joy to work with him. I thought you said it was no joy to work with him. <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you all. Okay. Then all I right. figured it out by context. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so we're gonna go back to our interviews, appointments, and reappointments, and this is going to uh, our ratification, the town manager's appointment of the seasonal lifeguard for Cole Kiefer, and to the town manager to present this. Okay. So um, the second appointment for tonight that I'm asking the board to ratify is for Cole Kiefer as a seasonal lifeguard. Cole will serve as backup to coverage for the other regular seasonal lifeguards. He was a lifeguard at the Jewish Community Center in Lancaster last season and is a Lunenburg High School senior currently. And he holds his certifications for lifeguard and CPR and AED. Excellent. I would move that we ratify the town manager's appointment of the seasonal lifeguard, Cole Kiefer. Second. Any additional discussion? All right, so many as are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. All right, the motion passes. Thank you. All right, so to the town manager report. Okay. I will start with the board and committee commission vacancies. There is one vacancy on the architectural preservation district commission, two vacancies on the finance committee, one associate vacancy on the green communities committee, one member at large vacancy on the open space committee, one vacancy on the personnel committee, and one associate vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Anyone interested in serving in any of these roles can visit the town website and find the volunteer application form there, complete it, and return it to the select board's office. If you have any questions on these positions, please contact our office at 978-582-4130, extension 144. For employment opportunities with the town, there are currently these positions open. The assistant town accountant, which is 32 hours a week. Assistant meal site manager, which is 19 and a half hours a week. Assistant outreach coordinator, which is a new position this year for 10 hours a week. Conservation administrator, which is 36 hours a week. Facility superintendent, which is 40 hours a week. Finance director, which is 40 hours a week and contractual. Heavy equipment operator, which is 40 hours a week. Principal assessor, which is 40 hours a week. There are two seasonal cemetery laborer positions and videographer positions with public access, which the hours vary, but they're generally between two and 10 hours a week. Information on these positions can be found on the town website under employment opportunities. An update on the home rule petition for a means-tested senior citizen tax exemption. It's now been given a bill number, House Bill number 3911. Representative Scarsdale's office notified me that the hearing for the home rule petition to create this means tested senior citizen tax exemption is scheduled for July 25th with the Joint Committee on Revenue. Written testimony may be submitted to the committee via email at jointcommittee.revenue at malegislature.gov or to the Joint Committee on Revenue at 24 Beacon Street room 34, Boston, Mass, 02133. Please indicate the bill number, House Bill 3911, in the subject of the email and the any correspondence as well. The committee will accept written testimony from Tuesday, July 25th until Friday, July 28th, 2023, uh, until 5 p.m. Representative Scarsdale will submit written testimony in support of the bill as well, and I have submitted a summary of the bill to her office um, to help her write that testimony. Is there any need for anybody to be there for this? That's not a request, okay. but um, okay. it's more than welcome. I pass this along to the Council on Aging Director. She announced that at today's Council on Aging meeting, um, so all the members there know of that, and I'm sure they'll um, Sue actually wrote a draft letter for them to use, you know, as a template um, where they would insert their comments okay. uh, as far as in support. So, but if any um, member of the board or public wishes to submit testimony, um, if you need that information, you can contact our office as well. So it says written testimony is accepted beginning Tuesday, the 25th? Correct. So not before then? No, they'll, um, th that's the hearing date, so. Oh. Mm -hmm. You could provide it to the, mm -hmm. to the okay, state representative we'll beforehand, but then the committee's not gonna accept it until that day. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Officially. I can get clarification on that. Those, those were, that was the direct wording that was provided yeah, to me. Yeah, it's just confusing the way it's It is a bit confusing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think they don't take it early. I think they really make you wait. Wait. I'm sure. What if you mail it? I mean, you can. Start. Start. <laughs> don't. No, no. They probably again, don't. again, I want to. I want to clarify what I think is what they're saying here. What a committee can't accept. A state committee can't officially accept anything until the a committee meeting is open, mm-hmm. and then they leave it open for so long. Of course, you can submit it early. It's just not going to be officially recognized oh, yeah. until that. That time. makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's sitting in the inbox, but right. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Invitation for bids and requests for proposals. We have a invitation for bids for the operations and maintenance of the Lunenburg wastewater collection system. Those are due on July 26, and an invitation for bids for two snowplow trucks, which are due July 31st. Town facilities updates. The Senior Center ADA pat- patio project is progressing according to the schedule. The retaining wall is in. Portions of the concrete sidewalk are in, and the footings for the pavilion are in. Uh, They're scheduled to do the slab this week for the pavilion. The architect has completed the drawings for the Ritter ADA ramp and building envelope project. The facilities director is working on the certificate to alter application. And once that's submitted, the APDC will need to schedule a hearing within 45 days. And a decision by the APDC must be issued within 20 days after the close of the public hearing, but no later than 90 days after the submittal of the application. It is, um, and the APDC is aware of this as well, it's noteworthy that during the architect's preparation of the drawings, documentation from the Historical Society revealed that the current windows in the building are not the original windows, um, but the replacement windows that have been drawn up by the architect replicate what the building, um, the windows originally looked like. Facilities director will be sending the assistant town manager a draft bid this week for the Lunenburg Adult Activity Center generator project and is close to sending a draft bid for the public safety carpet project to the assistant town manager for review. He is currently working with the architect on a review of the public safety building carport project and once complete that will also be forwarded to the assistant town manager for review. The school terminated their use of school dude for reservation of space at the school buildings, which also included to reserve space at the TC Pasios building. So the facilities department transitioned all the reservations that were in school dude to MIRAC. Um, so that's right now is going to be the temporary solution for reserving space. Just a couple updates not in here that um, will be coming up. Um, Today we had a leak in this room, Um, so that project obviously was part of a capital plan to replace this roof, so that's going to become a higher priority. Um, As far as um, that project, we are doing that in phases, because if you remember, the initial bid we received for the comprehensive project exceeded the appropriation. Uh, Also, which will be coming to the Municipal Building Design Committee, is there are uh, there have been about 23 leaks identified in the TC Pasios building roof. Um, we've known for a long time that roof is well beyond its life expectant- expectancy, um, but this is becoming more and more of an issue. Um, what we don't want to happen is we utilize a lot of that space. Some rooms are not able to use because the asphalt is hot or the um, if the asbestos is hot, and we don't want that to occur in our the space we are using uh, due to leaks. So that is something the facilities director um, and I spoke of today uh, to bring that to the Municipal Building Design Committee, and um, plans should be identified as quickly as possible so we don't lose space that we really depend on. IT updates, the fiber at the town hall was installed by Comcast in June, and new phone systems were ordered for the town hall, Ritter, Library, Lunenburg Adult Activity Center, and the DPW. The new town website through Civic Plus is expected to go live by the end of August, 
and the migration of data for the Munis update, which is our accounting software, is complete. We are now entering the training phase, and we have a go-live date of September, beginning of December. September, sorry, not December. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question of course. about that last unit? I mean, how prevalent is Munis in the municipal world? Are, are we, is it very utilized across the Commonwealth? Or are we in the minority? And the reason I ask is because we ran into this problem like being the last people off the, the DOR's assessment program that they closed down. And I don't want to be put in a spot where we're you know, we're doing this again. So is this, uh, is Munis something that it's well adopted across the Commonwealth? For, it, I, from my experience, it's larger communities typically, uh, mid to larger size communities. Uh, a lot of other communities use VADAR, I think is another software, um, but Tyler Tech has kind of a, a niche on accounting software. Uh, if you talk to Karen Brochu, um, she would dread moving to any other accounting software, but she knows it inside and out right. and uses it, obviously, nonstop. But um, it's, it would be a major undertaking to move our accounting software. Right, I understand that, and that was what was said about mm -hmm. the assessing software. So that aside, the fact that it would be monumental as any migration of any system mm -hmm. is. The, uh, my question is though, is it still popularly used? Is it still prevalent in the Commonwealth? Or is it a shrinking bunch of people and everybody else is going to other soft, um, accounting packages? Yeah, I could gauge that through Munis just to get a list of their, okay. that their would be Massachusetts great. Yep. clients. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I'm familiar with it on mm -hmm. um, Mass Development is about to adopt Munis, which I think is a mistake, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> it's very expensive, actually. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very costly software to adopt. I think, I think the price tag we got was $3 million. Um, so it's a very expensive system. Um, but it, from what I'm aware of, I typically work with middle to large. Everyone's using it. That's bigger communities. Okay. Uh, I, don't know about the, I don't know what the saturation level is on the town side, though. So... Okay. We might, I don't know, are we an outlier in Munis on the town side? Um, I don't believe so. No. Um, but again, I can ask for their client list. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. But Thank definitely you. smaller communities don't typically use right. Munis. Well, too expensive. Mm -hmm. Obvious too expensive. Reasons, right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you to the town manager. Are there any questions related to the town manager's report? All right. Um, before we go into our meteor things, I just want to hit our easy, uh, light, lighter topic in current business, which is a letter to ABCC. So we had previously signed a transfer. Um, we had previously approved a transfer of the alcohol license for Jack Country Variety to Pura Inc. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, due to financial circumstances, Pura Inc. is not looking to move forward with the purchase of the business. And so uh, we need to send a, a communication over to ABCC informing them um, that, the, um, that they've requested for the um, application to transfer to be withdrawn. Um, so uh, based on the form, it looks like only, only I have to sign this one, so I went ahead and signed it. And this would go again to ABCC, just advising them that Pure Inc. has requested to withdraw uh, the request to transfer the alcohol license for Jack Country Variety. Well, for the record, I will make a motion that we authorize the chair to sign the letter to the ABCC revoking the Jack's Country Variety Store transfer to Priya Inc. Second. <coughs> Additional discussion. As many as are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. All right. So I will pass this down for a really brief letter for everyone to review, and if we can add that to the stack at the end it's of the, the table. Drive. Yeah, it's in our drive. Yep. I'm going to do the warrants now, too. So we'll the warrants. All right, so we have a thank you to all the members who've come in over the last couple of weeks to sign off on different warrants. Uh, tonight we have a payroll warrant, the amount of, this is a little low. Is it because of school not being in session? Um, we have a payroll warrant in the amount of $745,000 and 93 cents. 
It's usually 950. Uh, we have a payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $684,808.48. If anyone can hear, I'm making comments that our payroll warrant's a little low. Um, and I think it's because of the schools not being in session that we did a lump sum payment uh, a few weeks ago. We have an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $506,723.09. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's go backwards to our discussion of ARPA funding uh, request and evaluation criteria. So I want to thank Selectman Imke for uh, over the last couple of uh, days. Uh, Selectman Imke went ahead and pulled together the information that Mr. Lonzo was requesting. Um, and so thank you for pulling that together, Renee. So if we go into our folder, into our ARPA folder, uh, we will find the, there's a, the document we're going to start off with is modified July 18th. So it's about midway down, ARPA committed and remaining request. Make sure we're looking at this correctly. You want me to introduce it? Please. Okay. So I took uh, Selectman Emke's, what she sent, combined it with the document that you, um, Mr. Chair, put together for last week with the committed funds uh, so there are two estimates in there for the um, board of health covid response hours and the remote meeting costs that i need to get uh, dollar amounts from karen brochu on um, her first day back today was doing those warrants before you tonight so i didn't want to um, bother her tonight for those because she was out straight today so if you'll there's a committed column and a amount requested column um, keeping the itemized column in the, separately for those departments. So mm -hmm. some of it's a little confusing because there's there were some requests that came in combined that were committed, but um, there was a remainder amounts. For instance, um, the school athletic field study that first initial request included the plow truck, um, but the committed amount is the fifty thousand above. The plow truck is down below. Um, separately. Yep. And we had previously said no to that plow truck, if I remember correctly. Yep. So that's what I guess, um, <laughs> looking for clarification because uh, some of these things that I think were agreed that wouldn't be funded, but trying to put everything comprehensively into a all right. So if we take this ARPA committed and remaining request, um, I first think that we need to kind of talk about process and, um, you know, do we want, I'm going to, my suggestion is that we um, use the processes that we've drafted as kind of frameworks somewhat as guides, but that we don't adopt um, a framework. I think it may be best uh, for us to, um, below rough justice um, in identifying kind of, you know, based on the needs that we've heard, the requests that we've had, uh, identifying uh, where we would like money to go. Mr. Alonzo brought up a really good point last week, you know, that we may want to consider retaining uh, some of these funds uh, that we don't, there's no immediate rush. We don't have to commit all of these funds in the full amount today um, or even this year for that matter. But that would be my suggestion in terms of process, that we will make commitments and allocations without uh, finalizing criteria. So do we want to stop and discuss that first? Because I think that's going to kind of guide how we go forward. Yeah, I mean, for, uh, not speaking directly to your point, but certainly as, uh, as it relates to your point, I mean, my, first of all, thank you to, to Selectwoman Emke for putting this together and to the town manager for putting it all into one and whoever was involved in getting this because this makes it a whole lot easier to review. So that's number one. Number two, my point is I, I intend now that I have this to be able to go through and prioritize for myself if we're not going to have official criteria for my own criteria, uh, what 
I think the priorities would be, and if everybody on the board did the same, then we would have a starting point for all of it. And then we can at least collate those responses. This is something we do in the capital planning that I think works well, is that every individual member kind of ranks the, the requests or even strikes them. Not I mean, you don't have to rank everything if you're not having any intention of funding any if something. Uh, and then you just collate them, and then we can come up with a list that would be a combined average list, for lack of a better term, and then we can discuss them at that point. I mean, that would be the way I would see it going, and that would be a recommendation I would make. I like that recommendation. Would you, would you also recommend, Mr. Alonzo, um, for the members to submit that in advance of our next meeting so that way I would have the opportunity to combine them? Sure. Okay. Sure. If we could, well, what I would ask then is if, if can we add a column to this, a blank column, or actually five columns? Mm -hmm. No, actually, you just need one. You just need one, one column, and then everybody would rank them and then submit them the form, and then whoever gets them, whoever's going to collate them, then that's, again, what I do as a chair of capital planning. I, I get the list, that column from everybody. I just copy the whole list into a new form, and then it'll, then you do the math and you do the averaging all together. So all it right. makes it really simple to do. It takes about 10 minutes. And uh, we're just looking at the, the bottom half. So the committed is right. locked. Yes. Well, I'm going to have a question about that in a second. Because I thought there was a question about the pl uh, one of the snow trucks or something. Did yeah, you I keep raising questions. Oh. <laughs> um, but I, we already committed the funds. Um, but okay. Right, but I, will, I, I, I think I'll take this opportunity, if I may. We voted the funds that we didn't use in the capital plan that, were, that the town manager had targeted from the special uh, purpose mm -hmm. uh, stabilization fund. There was membership from other committees, including the capital planning, that questioned why we did that. And we voted it for a very specific reason, to put a bid in on something to get it early. But if we haven't even put a bid in, and by the time that July 31st bids are open, if we get them and we order it, we may want to consider at a special town meeting using the special purpose instead and rescinding this, because this is money that's very flexible. And since town manager was looking at using that money anyway that may be something worthwhile I mean I'm I'm not taking a final position on it I'm just offering it as a suggestion it's something we want to consider I I fully support that because when we put in the order I mean the order is just a purchase order and where that money comes from we can not rescind it until after town meeting we can go to town meeting first and appropriate the money and then rescind it. So there's always the money available, correct? You mean if we got bids in and and placed the order, we'd have to have the appropriation available to do that to award the bid. Well, we have the we have the appropriation to place the order. I'm just walking through okay, the I'm process. Sorry. Okay. Yep. So you're saying at a, a future meeting, just change the where the appropriation is coming from. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, I believe that's possible, but I would just want to sure. confirm. Yeah, I think that I agree because I think that as we're looking at these numbers, and this was really the challenge that I was going through last week, is that we have some big ticket items, and and you know the the request from the water district, the request from the sewer commissioners, um, you know the request from the library. I mean, some of these are some big ticket items, and if we if if some of that money could be allocated differently and those funds were back available we may be able to better satisfy some of these requests because mm -hmm. you know we can't use a special stabilization fund to support the water district right. or the sewer commissioners mm -hmm. right. you know but we can use arpa funds to do it yep. uh, and it does change the conversation if there's another million dollars on the table yep. in terms of what we can can do yes. um, so i think that would be a really viable a really good option for us to pursue um, if legally we we can so which of the committed line items are up for reconsideration under that? Yeah, so that would be, as we, as we look at this, this would be the um, select, so item number three where it says select board ambulance, uh -huh. 506,000. The and then select yeah. board two so DPW snow trucks, 480,000. Yep, so $986,000, yes. Okay. So it's those two items. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, I also would be remiss to, it looks like you want to jump in here, Go Mr. Ahead. Frank. I would be remiss to not note that although the Parks Commissioners um, 
received a million dollar commitment from us, they were still hoping for more than that. So I just want to note that. Um, so I don't think that they they would consider this request to be closed. <laughs> Um, and then as we look further below, there's only one thing that I'm noting. Um, we had in a previous meeting decided that we were not going to advance discussion on the request from the public schools for a plow truck for $68,000. Um, that was something that was not prioritized by the select board that is moving forward. And uh, I think that we are going to discuss the sewer pump station, but we had also previously designated that that was something we weren't not going to advance either that we'd only advance the sewer manhole repair conversation. However, the sewer commissioners did provide supplemental information uh, that demonstrates impact during COVID-19, and I would urge that the board would consider the sewer pump station request. Mr. Franco? Yes, I just, uh, is it, uh, not only uh, as part of the assignment that we go home to do, uh, are we uh, not merely ranking these, but also pretending that each of us had full control over how this gets allocated and putting values on it too? Are you looking for that as well? I think it would, I, I think it would be helpful to do both. I okay. think that we should prioritize ourselves in terms of if we had to give money where, where to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we also can make commentary on the amount of money that should be allocated if it's less than the amount requested. Okay. I, I can outline how we do it in capital plan. So if you want to adopt sure. it so you rank it starting from one one is your highest priority you would put that as a one and then you'd go down to everything that you're willing to fund if you're not willing to fund it you don't put a number on it at all okay. then what you do is we'll have five columns of those you'll just add them up and average them and then you'll rank the, the those averages and that would come up to what the averaged ranking would be mm -hmm. if you were going to rank something but at lower you'd make a note you know, and say, hey, listen, I'm willing to support this at this level, but not at this, not at the full price tag. I'm, I'm willing to fund it up to this level. And you would just make a side note about that. Yep. Okay. And also just for mind setting, and I, I want to offer just, and we've talked about some of these before, but also solicit from others, just sort of a table setting, mind setting uh, approach as we go into this exercise and these are the kinds of things that I would be thinking about we've already talked about this one the factors to consider maximizing the reach and the uh, good the public good of the funding how many people will reach uh, and, and you know so a utilitarian approach to it maximizing the public good essentially um, you know so for example and I'm not I'm just gonna use this as an example I'm not picking on anybody at the moment but like you could make a case that the manhole cover thing re that part of that request affects everybody because everybody drive or nearly everybody because everybody drives two-way right so uh whereas the more specific request for the pump stations maybe does not affect everybody just i'm not i'm just yeah. put, setting a table that's all um uh, the other factor I would look into is are there alternative sources of funding or uh, potential alternative sources of funding? So there's some things hanging out there for me, for example, in the library request. We already know that Green Communities is being consulted on, on one of those things. I don't know if others on that list are also possibilities for that. So, um, you know, you can make, like, I might rank this and, and put something in there supporting it, but saying contingent upon no alternative source of funding. Um, and then, you know, just sort of, this is a tough exercise in general. It has been, there's only so much pie to go around. The pie has to be sliced up. And to my mind, just my own personal approach is that except for relatively small, small requests, like, you know, the, the $25,000, the $50,000 ones, relatively small requests. I'm having a hard time seeing full, fully funding any of these things. I mean, I just, you know, I'm thinking about hacking there's going to be still even after i drop some of these out of here and don't support there are some i don't support there's still not going to be enough pie to go around and you just have to cut somehow and uh, you know if you're valuing three things equally whatever with whatever money you have left you just have to apportion <laughs> accordingly yep. so uh, so uh, those are kind of my three thoughts on that and i certainly would solicit from others other things we should be considering as we do this. And Mr. Alonzo has already offered some, obviously. And I like those. Your list, I think, is very good. I can support every one of those on that list. 
I, I will say there's one thing that seems to be not on this chart, and that is what we had the meeting about last week, about the Flat Hill drainage issue. Is, is that, am I missing that somewhere? Oh, there it is. No, this, I see it. Sorry. Take TBD. it back. The TBD. Mm -hmm. All right. It's got this slight little one. <laughs> All right. Take it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that your utilitarianism approach is, is a wise one. You know, I, I think I apply that same logic and, and yeah, I know I don't like your examples um, you know I, I think something along those lines to consider especially as we're looking at some of the the boards that have requested money um, you know one thing that strikes me especially about the water district's request is that the water district provides water to just about every business in town mm -hmm. all of our schools um, and all of our municipal buildings and so that's affecting more than just homeowners it's also affecting you know uh, multiple industry so, uh, you know, something I think that we should consider, and, and uniquely, I think the sewer commissioners, um, you know, don't have the, the quite the reach as a water district, but cer certainly they also impact um, businesses. You know, Walmart doesn't have a septic tank sitting out back, uh, neither does Hannaford. So I think that, you know, along those lines, it's, um, I think we should consider who is impacted in terms of is it a residence? Is it business? So, you know, is it crossing multiple um, categories of, of property owners yeah. as well? Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. That, that's a very good point. I mean, if it, even if it doesn't impact you directly as a resident, but it impacts a business, it impacts you yeah. indirectly. So, One of the things that I would also offer, if I may, Mr. Chair, is that when we have this meeting, when we, when we finally get these, this, these tables and this ranking from everybody, I would put, I would venture to that we should probably put a sole agenda item night, except for maybe appointments or little things, so that this board, everybody can go over their own list in X amount of time, not too much time, but review it, and then have a discussion that's, that's contained in one meeting so that people can review it, and that we would have... You know, we wouldn't have to jump to, oh, what somebody said last week. We could present it, everybody would be fresh in everybody's mind, and we can vote on some of the major things then yep. and only dedicate that time to that because I think it's worthy. If we're looking at $2 million or so, you know, th then we should have the whole meeting that's just dedicated to that if we can. All right. I think right now the target for next, um, our first meeting in August, is that we are going to receive a... Uh, capital plan update because I think if we don't do it then the next time would be to do it on the 15th um, but we are planning a capital planning update but we are we do have a pretty open agenda coming up on August the 1st I just want to confirm do we have any appointments that were scheduled uh, recently that we're not tracking that I'm not tracking let me just check all right and but I we can work can on I that. ask one question well well uh, Heather's checking on that. Um, it's Flat Hill Road, they're coming back in September? Is September correct? the 12th, correct. About the drainage? Yes. So we'll... That still has to be conveyed to everyone. That was well, I, I would... Again, just, again, I think in rankings, August, it's, yeah. it's, it's... We don't I'm have any... trying number. to balance the... Uh, no, no, come no. To a That's why I said we have to withhold number. things. I don't think yeah. we're going to have a number anytime soon. Yeah for that really item so therefore i don't see us giving anything because it hasn't been determined yeah. okay a few things okay if i if coming back mr alonzo so right now the um our tentative agenda for the first uh, our next meeting would be we have a special uh, event license for saint boniface that's a pretty routine yeah uh, request um and then we also have a um anniversary committee appointment an interview so that should be about a 10 minute process and then we have appointments of election workers so i think we have about roughly 25 minutes booked but we can allocate the rest of the meeting for arpa and not add anything else to it sounds good as long as long as everybody you're right yeah as long as everybody provides their lists at that by that time so that's going to be important all right, yeah, let's speak about that. Let's talk about lists, because <laughs> this is always the hard part. So as we look at our calendars, and I know that you know we do the town manager's evaluation, this is a routine thing. So in order for us to be able to have a discussion on this on August the 1st, I would realistically need to get everyone's information um, by before the weekend. So that would be by Friday the 28th. 
So can everyone commit to that? Friday the 28th is deadline to provide me with your collated list. Is that going to be problematic for anyone? The 28th? 28th is a Friday. Close of business. All right. That gives me the weekend to, to work on it and also knowing that someone's going to be late. Um, it also gives me time to account for that. That'll be me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say it usually is, Lou, because it's usually me. But. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't be giving a whole diatribe about that and it be applied to yourself. That, that seems kind of pointless. Yeah, you know, in the past, it was, I feel like I was always the guilty party. Um. So, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, we send the list just to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Yep. I just want to also, if, if I could interject one more factor to be considering is as you're evaluating these things, how far would the money that you are allocating in your in your imaginary scenario take that project? In other words, would it you know, fund it three quarters of the way, but then, you know, like that doesn't, that's not good enough. You know what I mean? It like leaves the money, it, leave, it leaves it, the project not totally funded and incomplete. Yeah. So. Well, we can have that discussion then. I mean, yeah. So certainly something we would be kicking around though. went after we yeah. maybe after we've submitted these things. I'm noting that this is a PDF of a of a Excel spreadsheet. Can this be turned back into a spreadsheet? Yes. Uh, with the extra column for everybody, so we can just fill it in. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Um, I have three questions. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> three. Three. <laughs> All right. I won't exceed that. Um, do you, would the board like me to remove the public school truck from that? I think it, I think it can be removed. The public. School. I don't even remember discussing it. To I be very honest, remember it being. Okay, left. Cut. Remove it. Sure. Okay. Why not? Secondly, there are two projects that are TBD, oh. yeah. with the Flat Hill Road drainage project, and uh, Selectman Emke. Um, the request for PFAS testing assistance, which I, that is under the purview of the Board of Health. So for an approximate cost and what their feelings on such a program would be, I think would be appropriate to hear from them. How would those two projects be considered in your evaluation? As one member opinion, they wouldn't for this next round, but they serve as placeholders to know that I don't forget about them. Okay. And third was regarding the ambulance and the two trucks, is the board taking into consideration that dollar amount within what's available when you're doing your evaluation or not? You're saying those funds are committed at this time. You'll look to those at a later date. I, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are the easiest questions. <laughs> I'm not sure. Can you just like, I, I, I kind of, what was, what, give me that third one again. <laughs> are we considering the $986,000 that we committed for the ambulance and DPW trucks as we do our rankings, or are we considering that later? I think oh. the answer is we're going to consider that later. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to consider it committed right now. Yes. 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 And, because and less than until we it is. to work some kind of. Correct. This ranking exercise isn't trying to come to a balance to, nope. to hit the target of what's remaining, no. right? It's just a pure ranking. Correct. Yes. Okay, I'll only comment if we don't want to fund the full amount requested. Yeah, you just don't put a number there or put a zero. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And so with these, um, you know, they no, come. Hold they, on. Don't put a zero. Yeah, Take that back. Don't, don't put any number. So th they come to the chair for the purpose that we, as yes, we know, we can't share. Uh, too many of our opinions outside of a meeting with the majority. So if they come to me, I can compile them, but we all should come to our next meeting prepared with our own, um, this, the, what you submit to me, with our own comments. Yes. That way we can be prepared to speak to them. Uh, so it's just to, to allow me to consolidate them uh, in advance. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I think that, I know, Fran, you keep coming to <laughs> hear what we're doing. Uh, so what you're hearing from us today is that our next meeting on August the 1st, uh, we will be discussing ARPA in detail and, um, and making some decisions at that point. You can also attend these remotely if you so choose. <laughs>
All right. And I'm speaking to Fran. I don't know if the Why are you trying to here. convince people not to come? No, it's good to have it people comes, here. It's good to have them here. It's good. I, you know, I always feel bad when people come, and you know, I, I know they're here for a reason. Um, I thought he was just here for the entertainment. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm speaking of Fran, uh, who, who's um, part of the Water District. He is a superintendent. Is a superintendent or supervisor? Superintendent. All right, so next tonight, are we, I think that's a good ending point there. Next tonight on our agenda, we have discussion of fiscal year 24 goals. So what this is, is we're, a little, we're a little behind schedule on this a little bit. Um, so what I'm hoping that we can do tonight is, is start this conversation. We're not gonna finalize it today. Um, and this is usually done in like a workshop type setting. But my expectation is that for us that we will discuss uh, what these goals are, kind of outline general broad ideas, and that between uh, now and the 8th or 15th that we will finalize, uh, kind of come up with good language to finalize these into some kind of verbiage. So tonight really is more of a brainstorming uh, session I would categorize it as, so to allow uh, us the opportunity to again put these ideas into words that we can then edit and approve at a later point. Um, so let's start off with going over, uh, and I, I'm not sure if we put it in the drive or not, last year's goals. Do we need to go back into May for that? You know, there is a select board goals folder. Yeah, oh. there, were, there were three goals. So there's <laughs> one of them was the, uh, the primary school, which we didn't resubmit, but we did demolish so we got made some progress on yep uh, the second one i don't know if they're in the disorder is the senior tax relief which is completed mm -hmm. uh until it of course now it's in the hands of the legislature and then the other one was reviewing the bylaws and correct uh, and mm -hmm. procedures policies policies and bylaws yes yep. so i would like for us to continue with that third goal i know that we were working on it and then um you know when the tax situation happened that uh, that became less of a priority but we i think it would be great for us to take another look at the bylaws um you know as i read them i i, I think i found a couple more uh errors um of uh in which were referred to a select board uh, board of Selectmen, there was also an inconsistency when it related to the police department and our role over the police department that I think we might want to take another look at. So based on the, um, the policies, we make all policies for the police department, but based on charter changes that we don't really do that. Um, and so that was like one of the errors I saw that was just an, uh, an error. Uh, I think that we do exercise certain control over the police department uh, in terms of their policies, but I think the wording of it is just a little different than what the reality is. So I think it would be helpful for us to do another review. Um, I think for policies and procedures last year, I think we went in a lot more depth. I don't know if we need to do that this year um, to, to go over every single policy and procedure, but I think we should focus on the bylaws at least this year. No objection. What are our thoughts on this? I also have no objection to that. Okay. So that would be objective three of fiscal year 23. All right, and I'm just making the note. Okay. I think that um, if we talk about the first objective that we had, which was 30 School Street, so this is an action that uh, was initiated by this board and uh, I would encourage it to remain with the board because there's a little bit more work to do um, in terms of figuring out the final disposition of this of the space. What are our thoughts on that? Because I think so. A little history here: we had planned on considering to, um, having the location become like a park. Uh, we went before the town. I think that at that time, town feedback was that our plan was costly; that the idea wasn't fully developed. Uh, and the town did not support moving forward in that direction. I think that given all the public meetings and stuff we had, we were, we were honestly, I think, shocked. Uh, <laughs> I think we were a bit surprised by that result given that there was no intimation prior to town meeting that that could be the result. But I think that, that we have a parcel sitting in the center of town. Uh, grass was applied to the area where the building was demolished at and that, and that area is pretty level, uh, but there's still you know, a decent parcel there that we may want to figure out uh, usage for. So 
my comment would be that, uh, and this is, all, we always run the risk of, of summarizing as you just did, not, not by your intention, but it's like the town, like 110 people, <laughs> you know, got convinced that we shouldn't put something there, we should just demolish the building and do it separately. I also think that the project, the project that was presented had excellent res reception by the public. I think it was poorly labeled as a park, and I would, I would consider changing that, that it was meant as a multi-purpose, multi-generational open space. That's what that was. A when somebody says park, they think of swing sets or baseball fields. That's not what this was. This was a, a, a much different space. Uh, so it, it was like calling you know, the Boston Arboretum, a park. It's not really a park. It has a different purpose. Uh, I'd like to revisit that at some point. Maybe now it's too soon. Um, but I think the project that was presented there, I think had, was excellently suited. I thought it was well envisioned. And again, it was well received. So at some point, we may want to revisit that. Is it th this year? I don't know. After the town lost a million and a half dollars in revenue, then I mean that's not the great year to do this. But, but it will be at some point. Okay. So it sounds like what you're suggesting is maybe this isn't the year to continue this goal. Um, I would say with all, with Marshall Park going on, which has everybody's attention and focus, and other things that we're looking at, yeah, I would probably say yes because I think this that goal is a, is going to have a price tag and I don't know that anybody's looking for additional price tags at this point yep. okay. could I add commentary to that so I've always been of the mindset that I don't think those two parcels need to operate completely separately. I think they can um, move forward tandemly. One aspect that the board, I think, instead of delaying that, because it may get lost down the road if, if there's still not forward progress on doing something, even forward vision of what that timetable is going to look like, you know, whether it's pursuing grants at a different period of time, um, looking forward for financing, um, but just something to keep progress moving on that parcel. Because there's changes of membership over time, the board it may get lost. I will put my energy into it. You know, I mean, this board knows where my feeling lies in that. I was 100% behind the project then. And if this board decides to go forward, I will be 100% behind the project now and looking at the different mm -hmm. funding sources and, and maybe modifications to the plan to make it more suitable. I'm, I'm all for it if the board is all for it. And I think that's one of the things we need. I think we need the board to be completely behind it in order for it to gain momentum. Yeah, I think I would want to perhaps modify this a little bit in that um, anything related to missile building design committee um, it banks on there being additional parking um, off that parcel because um, parking is needed in order for any kind of thing to happen at the Ritter parcel um, over there more parking would be needed so um, maybe there's some combined you know, we are we you know we chartered the municipal building design committee um, you know we've agreed with the um, hybrid concept that was put forward. I think maybe we should combine that into a goal of, of coming before town meeting in the spring to move forward on that. And that 30 school streets a piece of it. Um, you know. So do we want to look, I, I can come up with some wording here, but do we want to look at that as being one goal uh, with the 30 school street piece or do we want to have a separate 30 school street piece? I don't, I mean, I think we're just discussing, th at that point we're discussing packaging, and I don't, yeah. I don't really care one way or, how, okay. or another how it's packaged, as long as it's included. All right. And I appreciate the town manager positing that she believes it should go forward, so. Okay. Are we in agreement about a goal related to buildings by next spring?
Sure. I am. Okay. Yes. All right. That sounds like three to me. <laughs> uh, are there any other I know that separately um, you know conversations are go on, ongoing with the green communities uh, committee related to solar panels on the old dump uh, that would help provide the town with a source of revenue um, you know and there's different ways that that could be packaged but that project is still in its infancy um, you know I think I had that conversation with them about a year and a half ago now um, and we, you know, there were some conversations with um, individual from, I believe it was MRPC, about different things. And then uh, at the end of last year, the state changed the law that related to redevelopment of brownfields. That previously, a lot of that funding for brownfield redevelopment was limited to, com uh, to communities that were basically cities. Um, and they uh, expanded that program to include everyone. So it's no longer a program that's only for basically urban environments. So that would free up some more money to help be available for Brownfield redevelopment. Um, and then, you know, with where the state's at, I know that some grant monies were being made available through some of the different uh, state agencies and quasi agencies to assist with that. So I think there's more to be done there. I don't think we're ready to call it a goal, um, but it, it's something that I will continue to work with uh, the Green Communities Committee on advancing so that we can see how we get to a point where you know we can get some solar panels the old town dump generate some income and perhaps you know when we have this discussion we can tie it into specialized purposes you know whether it's uh, general fund offset or if it's funds that are specifically allocated for you know buildings you know our most expensive things in town so that way it helps build up a steady reserve there's different ways you can do it but i think there's a lot more conversation to be had is the point um, and I'll work on that, but I'm, I'm not. I'm hesitant to ask that to be a goal. Other areas the board feels passionate about? Uh, well, I'm not sure that this goes in the realm of goal, or but certainly goes in the realm of radar item. And to the extent that the board can be of assistance and support in this regard, but the whole staffing issue, um, you know, I don't. I don't know how that gets articulated into a goal for the board, but. Um, what can we do to um, assist in the situation? You identified pay as a as as as, a, as an issue. So I don't know if that's ripe for making into a goal or not, but it is something I throw out there for us to have in our heads. I think if we have ARPA money available to the town manager to get a consultant, that's probably what the town manager I would assume would need based on our conversations. Because uh, I think it's a little more than just pay. It's also somewhat of a reorganization. You know, there's there's probably some positions that could be reimagined as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that it's not always just an ad. Sometimes it's an ad and modify. Um, so I, I think the town manager and I have, do you, I can share this. The town manager and I had a conversation about how to advance that topic. I think the, the thought uh, was that, you know, we, have some you know, resources available um, that we, you know, we may want to look at a consultant who can assist, who's familiar with municipal government um, and can assist with um, kind of that in-depth analysis of our staffing current position and where it can move or modify. Okay. But I, I would expect that over the coming weeks or so, the town manager will, will come forward with that. And we're not talking about town manager goals tonight, but I do know that that is something Heather has mentioned as well. Yeah, but it's also like I just in general from the conversations, it's 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 a. It, it, I don't think that this is necessarily out of our purview to be of assistance on either. I mean, that could be formulated into some sort of board goal. It shouldn't be a go it alone type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, like a supportive goal. Yes, and and uh, by the yes, and bringing up the pay that was definitely by way of non-limiting example. It's a much bigger problem than that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, I'm making a note here, supportive goal, town manager. Thank you. Yep. And we, you and I can talk more about that and kind of formulate that. All right, I'm going to kind of look at um, our newest members. Uh, I know that you guys both recently had some campaigns, which means you're a little closer in contact with uh, a lot more people from the public. And so there were probably some campaign ideas that you guys had that, that you may want to present for us to consider advancing. So I can just go through the list I have here. I actually had personnel here too, but um, like Mr. Franco said, I'm not really sure what exactly constitutes a goal and what doesn't. It does seem like a lot of them are more like 
uh, I don't know, policy uh, and procedure related, except for you know the um, old school street uh, lot. But um, so in terms of personnel, anyway, what I was saying is that increasing pay uh, is something that we should probably do. Um, but the biggest issue that I think we have too is retention. Um, obviously actually filling the roles is an issue but we don't really have that much control over the job market um, so um, how do we help people stay in the roles that they're in and how do we um, improve morale um, so that's one thing that i had written down um, i also wrote down um, exploring establishing a municipal um, light plant so municipal electricity, um, it's something people on this board have mentioned. It's something that um, a lot of town residents have mentioned. We pay more than double the national average in electricity costs. So I think that's something that we should at least start to push forward. I don't think it necessarily needs to be a goal that we work on and complete this year, because first of all, it's probably not plausible. It's probably going to take longer than that. But I think it's something we should at least start some work on. Um, I also wrote down um, increasing participation uh, in town government, voter turnout specifically. Not that I, again, I don't know if that needs to be a goal um, or, you know, exactly how to do that. I don't really know, um, but I wrote it down as well. There are a couple others, but I'll, I'll turn it over to other people. Uh, uh, Go ahead. <laughs> I would add some comment that, um, you know, it's hard to get public participation. We've had goals in the past of looking to improve public participation. Um, and they're, they're, those are challenging goals. I think that something that was said tonight was very true, which is, you know, a, a lot of times how people volunteer is someone that they know uh, has given them that kind of insight, has made that like personal appeal. Uh, that tends to be highly effective. You know, sometimes having the booths at the farmer's market is something that um, can help introduce people, have them complete a, um, you know, um, volunteer application form that those have been helpful. But it is, I find that to be an in incredibly challenging goal to increase public participation um, because I think that w when I first started in government, I remember saying like people need to campaign more. They need to go to people's houses, knock on doors. After getting involved in town government, I, I fully recognize that when people have a problem, they will certainly let us know. Um, and they are very vocal when they do. And so I don't know how. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I have any magic answer. I've been, I have been unsuccessful in getting people to want to volunteer. Um, who aren't already volunteering. So I don't know if that's something that's a realistic goal that we can take on and get a real result on. And then my other comment was I'm fully opposed to the select board making a goal of replacing Unitil. Uh, I think that, that sends a terrible message um, to the electric company. Um, I, and I think that a better approach would be to explore it. Um, and to, you know, not for it to be a goal, but to explore what that looks like, what, what is entailed in order for that to even be an option on the table. I think, you know, kind of that r level of research, I know that we have members of the community who already kind of know this stuff, but maybe formulating that in a way that's presentable and digestible would allow us to get to a decision point on whether or not that should be a goal. That would be my input on that. Could I just add on to that? Just like creating an electric, I mean, there's so much to consider in that. So a feasibility type uh, study, I think, would be necessary with case studies of, you know, bringing in the experience of towns that have undertaken um, moving to a municipal light department, uh, such as Shrewsbury and um, I believe, um, where is it? Uh, has municipal. Concord, okay. Yeah. There's one out towards um, oh, lot, Holden, actually. I think. Littleton, Princeton, Marblehead, yeah. So there's a <laughs> bringing those in as case studies as yeah. far as what their experience, pros, cons, uh, cost benefit analysis and such. Um, and just my commentary on, because and I've said this before about uh, increasing participation. Years and years ago, 
I was approached by a friend who was on the Conservation Commission, and that's what got me involved in my town government where I lived at that, that time. So I think a lot of the time it's who you speak to, who you're advocating to get them involved, um, what your experience has been, um, but also being the change that you want to see. Um, people are not going to want to get involved when things are contentious or hostile or um, certain types of meetings. That's, you know, people have busy lives. They want to commit their time appropriately and be a positive change as well. Yeah. I have, if I may. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, is that friend who got you involved still a friend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always the first question to ask. <laughs> uh, I agree that if, I agree with that last point. That obviously, people, in order to get people to want to volunteer, it has to be something that they feel they won't be wasting their time. So it would be a constructive uh, discussion that will have an impact. I think that's what people are looking for who volunteer. They want it to be constructive and they want to have, be able to see results. I mean, they, they're going to be disappointed in the speed of the results because that's the way municipalities work, but that's how they're engineered to work, but they still progress nonetheless. Uh, but to get people involved, believe me, has been you know, the thorn in my side forever. And if somebody has a magic bullet how to do that, I'd love to know. Uh, when it comes down to the municipal electric as somebody who put together and, and, and raise the idea of putting a feasibility study after the ice storm of 2008 in mind. Um, unlike the chair, I will be very bold in saying if I could get rid of Unitil, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I don't think it sends a bad signal because I've said that for the last 15 years. So, but there are huge obstacles. Number one, there has been no one who's converted from a private utility to a public utility. All the ones that are public utilities that I am aware of became public utilities when the grid was being formed back in the 30s and 40s. So, you know, at that time, that's what happened. Some private entities went in some places and some towns decided to take control of their own fate and did it then. And not everybody, that's why they're spotty. Uh, of the 351, I don't even think probably, I, I don't know this for a fact, but probably about 10 to 12 percent of them are municipal uh, owned. But worth doing, the big obstacle is that unless you're going to build a parallel system, you would require to buy the existing infrastructure, which is why the Muni Bill has been so important, why I've supported it ever since it was, you know, first presented to the, the state legislature. and. I still support it because that gives the town the teeth to say, okay, we can talk about the feasibility of doing it and it won't be done in vain because if we come to the conclusion that it is worth it for us to do it, that we have a, a way to buy it without the, uti the utility just saying, nope, we're not doing it, we're not interested and that's it, which is where the legislation is now. There's no way that a, a municipality can force the sale and that's problematic because there's no way a utility, especially one that only has four towns in Massachusetts, is probably willingly going to just give it away uh, or sell it. They're going to think that, nope, it's going to be worth more if we just hold on to it. So that is the big obstacle to that. But otherwise, I am in full support of the Muni Bill. And if that ever passed, believe me, I would 100% get behind a feasibility study to see what it would cost to do it. But to build one separately would be enormous, enormous cost of funding. So if I may just add a couple of points on the volunteer piece, um, uh, that, that, that idea of the booths at the farmer's market, that will either increase participation or kill the farmer's market. <laughs> uh, uh. I did it a couple of times last year. We got one person to join on the, on the Agricultural Commission. OK, but also, I just want to say that the you know, even, uh, I mean, publicly participating in government is not just volunteering on the boards. It's also showing up at meetings, show, uh, understanding issues, and, you know, just in light of the most recent crisis, I mean, we had a lot of public participation, for sure. Um, I think in some ways that whole crisis made uh, this even more challenging. It made being on boards and committees less attractive uh, to some extent because of the way some of the dialogue uh, occurred. Many people that 
were, uh, in that crisis, who were affected by that crisis, did it the right way. I mean, they advocated in the proper way, that vote, you know, forcefully and vociferously, and but but properly. Many did not. Many spread spread a lot of false information and uh, uh, accusations unfounded, and and made the whole thing a lot less attractive in terms of serving on, on boards and committees. Uh, just by being ill-informed or, I mean, you know, uh, spreading misinformation um, unintentionally or intentionally in some cases uh, on, on, on public media, on, on social media or what have you. Uh, I think, so I think the public has a role in this too to do it the right way. There were many examples of people doing it the right way that, that were affected by that crisis. Uh, uh, people that brought data and facts and made good arguments and didn't attack boards and committees personally or the town manager personally but definitely express you know forcefully made their cases and to me those people are more convincing the people that come in and they know they have their research and their facts and they come in with, with you know civility and and uh, make their cases those people are more convincing to me people yelling their heads off and spreading a bunch of false information and conspiracy theories i stop listening so um i'm just making an appeal to the public too that the public has a role in this think about how you might be um, affecting positive discourse or poisoning the well when you when you engage in these matters thank you Renee? Okay. Um, so I just want to expand a little bit on some, one of the, two of the topics, I guess, that have been um, brought up already, and then I have one more that hasn't been talked about yet. Um, the personnel. So, I mean, I'm dealing with this now in my day job. I'm trying to recruit. Um, so I'd be interested in, in, in learning um, again, I don't know how if this would how or if it would be any goal for select board. So this is just my little opining here. But um, is it if it's a lack of applicants and do we they is a salary range posted? I know for us we don't post a salary range, so that's not a barrier to getting applicants. Not saying every applicant is is a good one, um, and. For us, at least, uh, a career path is important. So the, and maybe this was what a consultant could do as far as what the job is and what it, uh, some kind of career progression or career path. So maybe just redefining um, positions in town would help. I, I don't know, I don't know, it, and I don't know if anyone knows what the, the problem is with the difficulty in hiring. I mean, everyone's having it, yeah. so, so it is harder to find people now than it used to be but um, anyway those are some of the things um, so anything the select board can do to help with that um, I think would be great I don't know that it really falls into a select board goal and then for volunteer um, and this this kind of dovetails with something that hasn't been brought up and I think it's really basic and and it, I think it can't be, I think it's undervalued. The communication and transparency piece. Some of it is just people just don't know. They just don't know. Even though we, you know, say the openings, they're in the paper, they're on the website, not everyone's online. How, how do, and word of mouth is still, I think, the best mode of, of advertising and getting messages and things across. Because um, not everyone is online. Um, trying to find the, you know, not everyone's on social media. Um, what is the, the best avenue for, for reaching the most people? Just getting information out there of what topics are going to be presented. I mean, I know like for town meeting, you know, the Warren articles are mailed to every home. I know some of them pe pe probably take it right in the yep. trash. Yep. Um, and, and that is the public responsibility. So some of the onus and account, it, it falls on and, and there's, there are some people who are just, you're never gonna change their mind. They're, they're just, hey, just leave me alone. I'm gonna go home, do my thing. Uh, I'm not, I, I just am not interested. So there are some people that you're not going to um, be able to get to, to become involved. But I think there are people who just, who would be involved and for whatever reason, it's just, 
we're not reaching them or if it's too difficult for them to get the information so so even like redesigning the town website making it the, the user interface all of that i think that could be some formulated into some kind of select board goal um it's really basic but again i think it's undervalued i mean i know for us in my day job you know our marketing our documentation it's 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 important um, and it's constantly being you know tweaked to, to reach the most you know as many people as we can um, and this is actually not just with outreach into the into the community in the town but even across the different boards and committees in town like uh, the example of the private wells and board of health and PFAS I don't think they've discussed it yet on any of their agendas I I, th I think it's on their radar to, to it's gonna have to come up at some point I mean um, but we, we're not even talking with them um, about this and and probably other boards too um, so even even communication within the town com boards and committees and so forth I think could be improved I'm not saying I know exactly how to do I'm just saying that's something I think we could work to improve um, and some of it, I think also getting back to the volunteers, some of the, the meeting times just don't work for people. This came up with the board of assessors, you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock on kind of limits. Who can, who can volunteer for these, if, you know, if they're not retired or have that flexibility with their job, they're limited to what they can get involved with. Um, so that's a stream of consciousness, uh, kind of. It was a good one, though, Renee. Um, you know, I think y you bring up a lot of good points. It's challenging, and I don't, I don't know the answer. You know, I, I haven't been on social media. I gave it up for Lent, and I haven't gone back. And I, mean, I, I feel I'm surprised at how amazing it feels not to be on Facebook. And so I don't know if I am going to go back. And I certainly recognize I'm missing a big chunk of information. Um, but, you know, I generally feel so much better being away from it that I, I don't have the desire. But it does bring the question, like, a lot of information I would previously be exposed to, I'm not exposed to it anymore, so I just don't know. Um, and it is challenging. You know, one of the, something along those lines of engaging people is I remember when, when my family moved into Lunenburg in the early 90s and we had like I don't know if it was formal or not but it was like a welcoming committee and someone actually like came to our house and introduced themselves and uh, sat down with my mother and went over like different town functions and different town boards and how to get involved and uh, it was one of my classmates mothers um, you know I, I learned that later um, anyway but I wonder you know if it would be helpful when we have new residents moving into town especially looking at this board and seeing that you know two of our current members um, are members who've moved into town recently if it would be helpful for us to engage some of our newer members you know not everyone's lived in a town before not everyone knows how town meeting works and maybe we do need to be a little more informative than we needed to be in years past to engage people when they come in about how to participate. What is the warrant booklet that comes in the mail, you know, twice a year? Um, is that something that we should look into? Not, uh, I'm willing to try anything that would work. I think I have, you know, my experience in just to use Renee's terminology, day job, but in my, my actual employment, you know, is very similar in the fact of what, what the town is seeing. I mean, we, we posted a job in a high tech company for a high paying job and we got like three applicants. And we posted on every, every major job board that you can think of. You know, one of the things that I, I think when it comes to the communication, and I just heard this recently and it really resonated with me, is, you know, Think back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, well, not 30 years ago for you, but <laughs> there, was, there, there was fewer avenues of communication, and there are more avenues of communication, whether it's media, whether it's streaming, streaming music. There was just a handful of radio stations, a handful of TV stations, no social media. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you, they had to call your home phone, which was you know, mounted on the wall or on a desktop somewhere, and you, or they sent you a, a mail. But now there's like 
countless ways that people can, and so you get, con even though there's more avenues, you get contacted less, and there's less shared avenues. So it's less shared experience, and that's a problem. You know, it, 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 without being too philosophical, it's a, it's a problem in the culture, too. We have less shared experience that everybody says, oh yeah, I saw that TV show. You know, the, the, the last episode of MASH, which is still, to this day, the highest rated, most watched show ever, was like 40 years ago. And it's all diluted. Nobody ever tunes into like one thing. Just Super Bowl events or sporting events ever get, the Olympics get that kind of play. And that's the problem with getting information out of any kind. And certainly getting information out that unifies people. The other thing is, it, we've turned from, I didn't live here, when people like families who've lived here for like the 18th, the 1800s, or even since the early 30s. Uh, this was a, a, you worked in the town. And so you cared more deeply because you worked in the town and if you moved, you didn't move that far. Right, you moved to Lemonster or Fitchburg or you know, Townsend or Shirley or something. Now it's become more of a bedroom community and there's less connections between neighbors. There's less connection to the town. And the idea of going to work, coming back, and then doing what they perceive as work instead of... I, everybody on this board, I feel, because I, I feel I know, know some of you better than others, it's a rewarding experience. It's not work to come here. Yes, you have to put in hours, and sometimes it is work. This year was work, okay? <laughs> but, but it's rewarding to be able to help move the town. In my tenure here, because of the different boards and committees across, it's not, I, I don't want to put this on me because it's not, but all the boards, in the last 20 years, the town has changed a lot. It is so healthy financially. It is more vibrant than it was then. Now there are some things that we're losing, like like the Baker Variety says, the, the hometown store and like the, the, the bonfire that people would want, and we should work to get those back. But in all, we're in a good position, and it's been good being part of that. And if we could just tap into people who want to participate in that and not think it's work and not think it's argumentative and not think it's too slow and not think it's done, it's a waste of my time. It's a mindset change that I think is, that's why it's challenging. Yeah. And I probably went way longer than I wanted to. So no, no that, that was really good information, Tom. All right. So the engagement goal, um, how do we fine tune that to make it something that's workable? Because you know, we can all talk to our friends, but you know, what's the tangible product? Smart goal. Say again. A smart goal. Yeah. What's 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 the product that we can actually deliver? Well, I'm taking that question at this particular juncture as rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we go home and think about that. Yeah, <laughs> let's think about it. Because um, I, I think that welcoming committees help. I do. I think it is part of a small town thing, and not everyone's going to be interested. But I think I think it helps. I mean, especially when you um, when you have people coming into town that are sometimes first time homeowners. That that again. People who aren't from New England have no idea what a town meeting is, or in, in our whole system of government, it's so foreign to them. And so, making that, explaining that, giving some kind of information pamphlet about the community that people are moving into, I think may build a better sense of connectivity to the community, uh, to the roots. You know, I mean, we have, you know, I, where I live, I where I just so happen to live. You know, I, I live next to some of the older families in town. You know, the Barneys. And I live next to property owned by the Powells. I and mean, people who've been here and their families have been here for decades. And so that was always like just part of the identity of like, I'm not a proctor, you know? <laughs> and, like, and then knowing like, you know, having so many kids in my class that were proctors. Um, but I also know that I, you know, I, I went to the school here. I think officially someone said to me the other day, like, you are the definition of a townie, which I didn't realize. Uh, but. You know, I think that there is a there is still that old town culture that we have, but it's also a lot of people who've moved here who weren't born and raised in Lunenburg, but who like the small town. Like, you know, as we heard tonight, like people, the town's beautiful, and that's something that stands out to people. So, how do we formalize that into some kind of? It's already our identity, but how do we spread that message to the people coming in here and inform them? 
I can kind of work it in a way that, that talks to some kind of welcoming committee, because I think, but maybe it's not just a committee, maybe it's like a packet, or maybe it's information, maybe it, maybe it is a knock on the door, I don't know. But I think there's something more that probably could be tangible that's a result that we can deliver uh, to some of the newer owners that we have in, in our community. Yeah. I think we should consult with somebody who's involved in PR marketing PR. I don't, know, I don't know if municipalities would, or, I mean, I'm sure, I know cities like Boston, I'm sure does it, and Cambridge yeah. does it because of tourism and things like that. But that would be something to do. Like, how do you promote the town? Yeah. Both internally as well as externally. Well, I would say Mr. Beardmore, if he wasn't already so committed. <laughs> like, one of the things <laughs> I thought about a long time ago was, was just merchandising. Like, we should sell Caps like I wear. I wear my Lunenburg hat from Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, all the time because <laughs> it just says Lunenburg, right? And I have some shirts. Like we should have do that somehow, you know. Get some volunteer effort to do that. Do T-shirts and sweatshirts and everything. Not, I mean, the high school does it for the high school, and that's wow. great. But I'm talking about more of, more so for the town. Uh, some swag. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I still have my Lunenburg 275th shirt. I, I do break, too. I have I two of them. I should break that you? because I inherited yeah. my yeah. wife's. <laughs> I think I was deployed. That was 2003, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two thousand. Yeah, twenty-five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was deployed when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't get my 275 shirt, but I will get my 300. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, Tom. I think swag. I would buy a shirt that that was a polo that said Lunenburg on it. You know, I would. Um, you know, that's probably a great idea. How to get, how to promote the town, how to get some swag. Um, all right, I think that we can. I can. I I will need to work with uh, the town manager on this one, but I think I can work with the town manager on coming up with a goal here. And you know, Renee, I think you have some good ideas. So if there's anything else that you can think of, if you want to text me, email me, that'd be good. Okay. And anyone else can, for that matter, too. All right. You know, I don't want to drag the meeting out any longer than we need to, but I, I, every, I, you may, Tom and uh, Michael Ray may know, recall this from when I was running for select board. About every 18 months, COVID threw this schedule off. About every 18 to 24 months, we take a family trip to the Adams National Historic Park and go to the three Adams homes, the, the house John was born in, uh, then where John and Abigail lived, and then the one they eventually bought, the, the, the palatial one. Um, and I, John and Abigail Adams are personal heroes of mine, and I take a lot of inspiration from them. And um, when we just went, we went a couple of weeks ago, we went the week after Father's Day. We were gonna go for Father's Day, but we couldn't, my wife couldn't get the tickets, so we went the next week. And, um, you know, just uh, going on that tour, I mean, I have them memorized practically, but the tour, you know, that John Adams' father was a, was a member of the select board in Braintree. And, um, of course, they called it the selectmen back then, until very recently. But um, it's, you, know, you brought up the whole like, unique to New England thing, the whole town uh, government uh, that there's a, uh, this is ancient, in, in, you know, by, by U.S. standards, and it's a really special thing to be a part of that. I, I just kind of, I felt a certain, um, I feel a certain um, kinship, even, you know, I like to, I'm, I'm, I'm glorifying it, you know, th they don't care, the Adamses, but <laughs> I like the kinship <laughs> that I have with the Adamses by serving in this capacity. Yeah. So. Um, I know it, it sounds nutty, but you know I'm a little bit nutty. <laughs> was it farmhouse? What? Their farmhouse is it Ashby or Ashburnham that they have their? Yes, there is. Uh, it's Ashburnham. Ashburnham. Yes. Where they have their homestead at. Something. Yeah, yeah. I I forget what road it was. I actually we discovered it by accident at one point. So did and, I. I, and then uh, then I took it out that road on purpose. That road is a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. Uh, anyway, I just went. Well, it would be hundreds of years before DPWs were invented. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that road is. I think it's because it goes up like a hill, and, and the road looks like like most of the roads that connect Lunenburg to Fitchburg. It looks like that. Like it's in really poor condition. Um, all right. I think that we're at a good point with our goal discussion. Um, any, anyone else have anything else to contribute there before we go into minutes? I think we have some minutes from April to approve tonight. 
All right, if not, we'll move ahead into our minutes. Uh, I'm not seeing them yet because I'm not in the folder. Let's see, July. I didn't see any minutes for this week. Nope, they were emailed to us for their next for meeting. August for next first. for August. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Um, do we have any action items this evening? All right, committee reports. Um, actually, might this might be an action item? I think maybe. I was wondering if um, at an upcoming meeting, if we can get an update on the investigation report for the tax, or you yep. know where that stands. Yeah, I can provide. I'm not going to. I'm not going. The eighth would be ideal, but I'm not going to be here on the eighth. Um, so I can target the 15th for that. Okay. And I'll need to take some time anyway to check in with Tom and Heather before that. So we'll target the 15th. Okay, good, thanks. Okay. Any other action items? All right, committee reports? FinCom was canceled last week, I believe, for a lack of quorum, but I'm not sure. No, I. Um, the agenda. Last minute. The agenda didn't make it to the oh, assistant. There we go. Counselor. I didn't hear the reason. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. It was because the. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, so they'll have another one in a couple of weeks. All right. I don't have anything. Okay. So just recapping, um, Mr. Nazzolo, you are going to be in training from the first through the fifteenth. Those yep. three meetings. That's correct. Are you uh, attending remotely or are you unavailable? I will not be available. Okay. All right. Oh, that makes the ARPA discussion interesting. I can submit everything so that you can have it. Well, if you would, then, of course, this puts, I don't want to speak no, for no, the chair, no. but I would say since you're not going to be here to talk about your list, you may want to supply a written narrative. Yep, that's what I meant. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we can talk and go over it, and that way I can get some good notes from you anyway. Yeah, I would be more than happy to actually submit like a statement. All right, when do you um, when do you become unavailable? When do I what? When do you, when do you leave? When do you become unavailable? Oh, um, it's right at the beginning of August. Okay. So, so all right. Yeah, the yeah. deadline is it can remain for me as well. All right, so let's try to you and I can talk offline. We'll try to hit touch base. Um, that last weekend. All right. Um, we know that August 8th will be a three-member meeting. Uh, I will not be here, so that would just be um, the remaining members. We can pass everything. Say again? We can pass everything <laughs> at that meeting. We'll make all the ORPA decisions. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the agenda for the 8th. <laughs> um, and then you and I will touch base about that meeting because it should be just a regular regular meeting um, and then um, all right our next meetings will be on August the 1st again as we heard tonight uh, the select board will have a brief meeting that night and then we will be discussing primarily ARPA uh, that evening um, we will meet on the 8th that will be um, a, a full meeting however we will have a three-member board and then again on the 15th uh, and then August 22nd that's a lot of meetings in August. Do we have? I know it's four, because but it's August. Are there any other complications with the August schedule? No. All right. And um, I'm gonna. Okay. Do we have any public comments this evening from the town manager? No. Thank you for asking. All right. Any from the public? <laughs> Seeing none. Any from the board? No, I thought, <laughs> I thought you were like, this is So if we don't have a meeting next week, remember, band concert Monday night, 7 o'clock at the T.C. Passios building, front lawn. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Uh, all, in, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, no. All right. The time is now 9.23, and the select board is adjourned. We'll